Hi, I'm Gidon from thetechnologyman.com. I found in my drawer at home a 25 year old Nintendo Game Boy, um, which I switched on and amazingly it, it worked first time. Uh, the only problem with it was some uh, vertical lines you see in the display. Uh, so I'm going to try and fix it and then I can give it to my children. So let's take a look. If I switch the Game Boy on and turn the screen brightness uh, all the way to its darker setting, you can see that the left and right side of the screen are missing. Uh, it's quite noticeable when you're playing a game. The cause of this is that the ribbon cable that attaches to the screen to display the vertical lines has basically become separated over time. So what I'm going to try and do with this repair is to heat up the, the ribbon cable where the vertical display lines are missing and try and reflow the solder and remake the connection. If you want to try this repair yourself, you just need some basic tools. To remove the case screws, you'll need a, a tri-wing screwdriver, bit size zero or one. And for the circuit board inside, you'll need a small Phillips head, again, size zero or one. Also, you'll need a, a soldering iron with some solder ideally a soldering station where you can set the temperature and you'll also need some double-sided sticky tape and a knife. You need to turn off the Game Boy, remove any cartridges and take out the batteries. Use the tri-wing screwdriver to remove the six case screws. With the screen face down, carefully pull apart the case, being aware of the cable holding the two sections together. Remove all the screws from the circuit board with the screen attached using the Phillips head. So gently pull up on the board. There's some adhesive holding it in place, so just use very gentle but even pressure. Once you've got it detached, put the front cover with its buttons to one side. Next, try and find something to keep the two parts isolated from each other. Uh, here I'm using some foam that came with a, a new PC motherboard. Next, put the batteries back in to give it some power and switch on the unit, turn the display on again to its darkest setting so we can really see where the vertical lines are missing. Now carefully remove the strip of black rubber just below the screen. and then remove the strip of adhesive which sits underneath it. Okay, so we're now ready to solder. I've tried this a few different ways, <coughs> both with and without tinning the soldering iron and at different temperatures, um, but I've had more luck at 400 degrees centigrade, which is about 750 degrees Fahrenheit, and tinning the soldering iron, which just means applying some solder to the tip. We have to use lead-free solder here in the UK at least, which has got a higher melting point than the solder with lead in it, and it requires this sort of temperature. So if you can get away with a, a lower temperature, then I'd recommend trying that first. But anyway, I've gone for the 400 degrees because I needed that to melt the lead-free solder. I'm starting on the left-hand side. You can see I'm applying gentle pressure to the cable. As you can see, vertical lines start to appear as I do this. I'm pausing for a while to let the solder cool down. So you'll just need to repeat this process until all the vertical lines have appeared. You can see the left side is now complete. I'm then repeating this procedure on the right hand side, which takes a little bit longer.
there's a single stubborn vertical line which took a long time to reappear. But I guess after about 15 minutes, uh, both sides are done and the screen is fixed. So I just need to stick the black rubber strip back on. I've used some double-sided uh, sticky tape to do this. It's now a good time to give everything a good clean and get rid of any dust. When I was cleaning the screen on the front of the case, I noticed it was quite loose, so I've actually uh, reapplied some double-sided sticky tape here, and then I've reaffixed it to the front of the case. It's pretty straightforward, putting it all back together again. So you just insert all the buttons back into the case front, They can't really be inserted incorrectly. You can see they're keyed. And then I'm screwing the board back in with the Phillips screws. Then I'm putting the back back on and screwing it in place with the tri-wing screws. Now's the time for the moment of truth. After putting the batteries back in and inserting a cartridge, it's time to try it out. The Game Boy is as good as new and ready for the next generation. I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please do consider subscribing and also please take a look at the article on this repair at thetechnologyman.com. Thanks very much for watching.